We have now built up two of the formal elements needed for the theory. We have an underlying abstract sample space and a collection of subsets of the sample space that we will call events or measurable sets. To complete the picture, we now need the idea of a probability measure. So we should begin by asking, what are the properties we would like a probability measure to have? And we should promptly reach into our bag of experience and see what intuition in common settings tells us. So here are certain lessons from a frequentist's point of view. Let us go back to the experiment where we talked about the first throw in the game of craps. As you recall, in the game of craps, we play by rolling or throwing a pair of dice repeatedly. In the first throw, we start with two dice and roll and sum the face values. The game proceeds by repeatedly throwing, adding the face values, and continuing until a conclusion. Imagine that we have 50 crap games going on at the same time, 50 games of craps. And in each of them, the dice have been thrown for the first time. Here is now a listing of the kinds of outcomes you might see for this projected experiment. Remember, we are throwing the dice and we're summing the face values. You'll observe that some of the letters are in red and some of them are in green. And now let us put this in the context of the game itself. The underlying chance experiment here involves reaching and throwing a pair of dice and summing the face values. This means that the outcome of the experiment could be viewed as an integer between 2 and 12. The sample space omega is a collection of integers running from 2 all the way up till 12. Now in the game of craps, the first throw can be decisive in one of two ways. One could win on the first throw. A win on the first throw means that one throws either a 7 or an 11. Or one could lose on the first throw, which means that one throws a 2 or a 3 or a 12. I've tagged these in color to make them visually clearer on the screen. Now, one could also ask, what about the event that the game terminates on the first throw? Well, for the event that the game terminates on the first throw, either one has to win or one has to lose. Winning and losing are mutually exclusive. They share no outcomes. And therefore, the event of the game terminates in the first throw is the union of these two events, A and B, and that gives rise to the set of possibilities, 2, 3, 7, 11, and 12. Very well. Now, here are various events that are possible in this underlying space. Remember, the experiment is again just throwing a pair of dice once and summing the face values, and now we have 50 repetitions of this experiment. A natural way to ascribe chance to these events is to count and look at the relative frequency of times these events occurred in a long run of independent trials, independent performances of this experiment. Let us introduce a little nonce notation, a temporary notation. Let's use the Greek letter new to represent frequency. So the frequency of an event we define to be the number of times the event occurred divided by the number of times the experiment was performed. Now let's begin with the sample space itself. Well, every time one rolls a pair of dice, one gets a number from 2 to 12. And therefore, in 50 performances of this experiment, the sample space occurs every single time. And therefore, the frequency of times the sample space occurred is 50 divided by 50, or 1.
the sample space is certain. What about the event that one wins on the first row? In the 50 games that have been begun, we notice that there are exactly nine protagonists who rolled a 7 or an 11. And therefore, it is natural to ascribe to the chance of winning on the first throw the ratio of 9 to 50. Similarly, seven protagonists out of the 50 threw a 2 or a 3 or a 12. And therefore, we assign to the event B that one loses on the first throw in craps the tentative chance 7 over 50. And what about the chance of terminating on the first throw? Well, one terminates if one throws a 2 or a 3 or a 7 or a 11 or a 12, and there are exactly 16 such possibilities in the string of 50 I've shown you. Well, of course, 16 is exactly 9 plus 7. An outcome which triggers termination either belongs to the event that you win or to the event that you lose. And therefore, we find this very interesting additive property. The frequency of A or B is the sum of the frequencies of A and B. Three glorious, elegant, simple, spare properties in this game. The first, normalization. The sample space is certain. Second, Every such ratio is a non-negative number. One cannot have a negative frequency of occurrence. We have positivity. And third, if you have two events which are mutually exclusive, which are disjoint, which share no elements, then the frequency of the union is the sum of the individual frequencies. This is additivity. These three principles now codify and determine what a probability measure should have.